So I wanted to do a quick video to show um, how how the uh, VSA import is going to work, and you'll also get a glimpse of how you would use the uh, like skull option in the DMX model. So I've already dropped one and and changed it to this new uh, skull track skull option. It's going. <coughs> All these things are configurable. You, you'll see a whole lot of new options that you wouldn't normally see for the other DMX models. Like if you're on a standard model, you only see that many options when you pick the Skulltronic Skull. And this would work for pretty much any any uh, three-axis head. You you would just leave certain channels as zeros, and it would turn them off. So. I've already got this defined for the standard channels that are used in the Skulltronic Skull, so pan is 5. Everything's configurable, like the pan orientation is basically saying, you know, how many degrees. It's That's basically to make the display look, look right, so you can tune that, but it's probably going to be pretty close to what you need for the defaults that I've gotten here. You can set how many degrees of rotation you get when you go from zero to 100 percent, and then there's mix and min and max servo limits, which are which are used to figure out what values to output to your servos. So if something's 100 percent, you're going to get 1250. So you can tune your your limits and your angles for all your servos on this on the skull. You can also define your eye channels. Those, the, well, those are servos as well. And then there's three color channels. Those were already in the uh, DMX model. The other important thing is going to be to come in here and name your nodes. So I've already gone in and, and named all, all the nodes that are on the skull. I don't think I have this coming in by default. If I can figure out a nice way to pre-populate those for that option, I'll do that. But I need to make it where you can alter them if for some reason you have a different skull. <coughs> uh, the reason you see the little dashes or minus signs here is that this is a 16-bit channel and when you select the channel for the new servo effect, I didn't want to show both channels because you really should only be dropping the effect on on the main channel and then that's just the other eight bits of the channel so I made a way that you could just put the minus sign in front of there which means you know hide this channel and I'll go ahead and just create a dummy animation sequence so the servo effect is here and if I drop that on there, here's what I'm talking about. Down here, you can the servo effect can target a single channel. So now you'll see all the channels that that you defined over in the other, you know, back over here. So those, it's basically your node names that you have defined right here. They're going to show up right here, so you can target which, you know, which nodes you want this value to go. Out. So you can set the servo from 0 to 100%. And since I selected jaw channel, you can look up in the preview and you can actually see it's representing the jaw opening and closing. Also, it defaults to this 16-bit box being checked. So if we did, say, a, a value curve, you can see, let me shorten this down, you can see how it's automatically sending the commands to the servo to make that jaw move. So you could also do if you, if you want, you know, to control the colors like like the red, you can see the eyes aren't really lined up with it because we don't have data for all the channels yet, but you would uncheck that 16-bit box. And then that slider could control a normal 8-bit DMX channel. So let me delete that and show you how the import's going to work. So if you've been using VSA or have any VSA sequences, 
you're going to go import effects like normal and I've got a few sequences over here uh, you know what before I do that I want to go let me start a new musical sequence so I can add the audio just make it quicker now I'll go import effects navigate to a VSA file okay, and this is the new import dialog I created it automatically went and found all the tracks that are in that VSA file that were enabled so it's only going to try to import the enabled tracks because most of those files had 128 tracks but a lot of them weren't enabled and I'm so you could typically you're going a lot of these are going to come in on one layer so you could click any one of these and say I want that to be the DMX model so you can come through and define all these or I have kind of a quick selection box down here if you want to say they're all going to be DMX now what you saw happen when you select that box or even when you select these models it's going to try to match up the channel so it goes and searches searches the model and finds the channel that matches the track name so if you've named your nodes on your DMX model with the same name as your track names you can get an automatic automatic channel matching and you won't have to even set those it'll be automatic um, you can come in these are going to be the layer number that's going to come in on the model so you could change that I defaulted to just come in in order if you don't want like say this track to come in you want to come in and turn that off so you could come in and turn those off in fact you don't need to do that because if this channel is blank it's not going to import it's not going to import any data for that channel I've also got so once you once you've defined this you could you can do just like you do on the other imports where you save it as a mapping file and load it but course a mapping file for this dialog is not going to work with their dialogs even though I'm using the same extension but, so if you have problems I would I would recommend naming it so that you know what type of mapping file you have I didn't want to create a new extension type just for this dialog so I'm just going to hit OK it says you want to save changes I don't want to there's a couple warnings that are popping up. This is because the sequence I had had a couple of the values outside of the servo limits and so it, it's just a warning. I'm, I'm actually clamping them as I import them. So now all those, all that data for that sequence is now imported. So I'm going to hit render all. And then I'll just select the model so it shows up and hit play. You can see the skull reacting in the preview. The black so that that kind of shows you how how this uh, VSA import is going to work. Um, if you were, let me just do it again just to show a couple things. If it's possible that maybe you were going to have the torso on a different model, I'll just say pick that one so you could come in I don't have any node names on that model so I can't select it so it does allow you to to take any one of these channels that you're importing and throw it on different models and you might would say well since that's a new model I want that to be layer zero on that model um, so hopefully this is going to be fairly flexible and if we run into some some issues with this I'm sure there's going to be some stuff I might need to tweak but um, for now I think it does a pretty good job of, of importing the VSA tracks and running existing sequences so I hope you enjoyed it